Welcome to Studio Korea and welcome to the Korea Society. I'm Stephen Orper, the Senior Vice President. We're delighted to have you here in our studio audience uh, viewing online or listening via audio podcast or viewing via YouTube telecast. We are very happy to have had a stimulating uh, six plus months here in 2014 of policy discussions, corporate discussions, and uh, arts and culture events. Uh, this is the conclusion of the first half of our policy year. We will be back with you beginning in September. And we'd invite you all to please see our new policy calendar at koreasociety.org. That will be released in August. And join us in the fall uh, as we kick off uh, what will be four months of very engaging events. Uh, this afternoon's discussion is an interesting one because we have with us uh, Ivan Sarchenko. He is the United Nations uh, correspondent and the New York bureau chief for uh, RIA Novosti. Uh, he is an interesting observer of Korea. He has observed Korea now for several decades. Uh, he was resident in Pyongyang for five years from 1987 to 2002. He was uh, the first correspondent uh, from Russia into uh, South Korea when Russia and South Korea normalized relations. And he understands South Korea society very well as well. He's one of the few people who's had a very interesting look at uh, both sides on the Korean Peninsula, and uh, he has some very interesting and enlightened views in that regard. Uh, he has also uh, covered from both Japan and Australia a host of Asia affairs. Uh, as we will get to towards the end of our discussion, he is also something of a master chef of Korean cuisine. Uh, but uh, Ivan, welcome. We're delighted to have you uh, back here to the Korea Society, and we appreciate your continued support. It's a great honor for me to be here again. Thank Thanks. You. If I if I can paint the scene uh, from a policy perspective, uh, and it's a scene that I would invite you to uh, uh, feel free to to rework, uh, and that is a situation right now where um, North Korea uh, appears to largely, over the course of this year, uh, been at odds with most of the international community, certainly with the United States and South Korea on a few issues. Uh, there have been concerns, lingering concerns about a fourth nuclear test, uh, concerns about missiles uh, with a routine test as recently as today, uh, concerns uh, and some bombast about things in the media, a, a new film coming out called The Interview, uh, which has drawn some North Korean uh, condemnation, uh, maybe much more importantly, uh, North Korea going on something of a uh, rhetorical uh, attack against the United States and South Korea in the spring, uh, certainly comments after the release of the United Nations Commission of Inquiry Report. That Commission of Inquiry Report, as we have focused on widely here at the Korea Society, cited North <coughs> Korean human rights abuses for the 120,000 plus individuals still in gulag-like conditions. Uh, so we're basically uh, at a situation where uh, you know, North Korea remains uh, certainly at odds. Uh, some people have pointed, though, to some changes and perhaps some overtures uh, that might have been missed on the international front. Uh, one of the reasons we like to have this series on the media is because you look at things from the fourth estate from a different perspective. Uh, certainly you personally and professionally have had the ability to look at the peninsula from both Pyongyang and Seoul, and as well as from New York uh, most recently. So, you know, how do you basically read where North Korea is now, and how do you see the situation progressing on the peninsula, at least in the near term? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, we often uh, hear um, such thing that uh, North Korean regime is unpredictable. It's, uh, it sounds from <clears throat> uh, many um, scholars and journalists, uh, but I, I don't think they are un unpredictable. Uh, if somebody cannot predict uh, something in North Korea, it's the problem of uh, a certain person. Uh, actually, uh, North Korea is, uh, it, it has its very, um, uh, I would say, unchangeable course and, uh, for many years. <coughs> Uh, and uh, mm, that's why we have this succession policy uh, from father to his son uh, only for one reason. Uh, for, first of all, uh, it's a long, uh, very long tradition uh, in Korea. It was easy to understand for the people uh, since it was a monarchy. Uh, so uh, 
why they are doing it now and under this uh, socialist uh, system. Uh, mm, uh, I see the only uh, one reason I said. Uh, <clears throat> uh, son will never uh, betray the will of the father. That's why uh, they, uh, they give all their power to the son uh, to continue uh, the, the previous line. Uh, of course, the, uh, 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 if you look at uh, what Kim Jong Un is doing, he's quite quite young and uh, uh, reportedly was educated uh, in Europe uh, for some time. Um, uh, he maybe understands what's uh, that uh, the, the things should be changed, uh, but it's not easy uh, uh, to uh, fulfill uh, what his father told him to do and uh, to implement some changes. Mm, uh, and uh, as I see it, uh, before starting doing something, uh, they have to uh, create a certain uh, new elite uh, which will support the future actions. Uh, that's why we have seen uh, so many changes in the uh, people surrounding, in, in the government, and uh, changing vice uh, uh, prime, uh, prime ministers, and recently a new uh, Minister of Defense uh, was appointed. So, uh, and I, I, I think this process will continue when uh, uh, Kim Jong Un will uh, select a certain circle of people uh, who will support. Uh, it will be a team to uh, to push the country forward. Uh, so you say you see that as inherently a more stable regime. There uh, is an argument I, I, out there no. that it's more unstable. Mm. You see, uh, Korea. Uh, what, what's going on in Korea, uh, and all predictions about uh, North Korea, uh, is very much con connected with uh, the surroundings of, of the peninsula. What, how uh, other countries treat uh, North Korea, United States, Japan, China, Russia. Uh, so uh, the fate of Korea and the fate of uh, North Korean regime is uh, much depend on the attitude of uh, the countries I just mentioned. Uh, so uh, about the predictions of what's going on, uh, we have to see. So everything what North Korea is doing is a reaction of the behavior of uh, the neighbor countries. Uh, so uh, it's just a reaction to how, how North Korea uh, had been treated uh, by, by the others, uh, including the nuclear tests and everything. So, uh, if we go back uh, to the history of uh, sunshine policy of uh, South Korean uh, two presidents, Kim Dae-jung and Nomo Hyun, uh, we um, can remember that uh, there were no major, no major uh, incidents between North and South at the time, especially in the Nomo Hyun area. Uh, a huge uh, projects of cooperation had been started. Uh, an agreement with uh, between the prime ministers was reached in 2007 Seoul. I covered this event. I remember it very much how uh, people were um, excited uh, in, in Seoul when the, the, the new agreement was signed. Uh, it, uh, uh, it was supposed to create a new economic zone uh, in Heju, uh, like it was in Kaesong, to start more exchanges and uh, cooperation. But uh, then a new government came to power in Seoul and uh, just easily uh, decided to, uh, to abolish these uh, previous agreements. So in this case, I would say that uh, at that time, South Korea was much more unpredictable than the North. And what happened after that uh, was exactly what we have now. Uh, so what I, what I mean is, uh, uh, if you uh, want to see what will happen in North Korea, it will much depend on what will happen around Korea uh, and the attitude of the um, major players in the region. Okay, to, to, to finish your thought uh, on the change in South Korean politics, mm -hmm. uh, now we have another administration, right. still the, the administration of right. President right. Park Geun-hye, right. right. uh, who made a, a dramatic address at Dresden uh, on the issue of unification, right. who has talked about something of a unification bonus or bonanza, mm -hmm. uh, meaning mutually beneficial uh, for a united Korean peninsula as it grows forward. Right. Uh, what do you see in terms of prospects for trust politique? Uh, yeah, it's... it's possible to do something uh, in case if there be a political will from the both sides. But as I said, 
what happened after the end of the sunshine policy, it's, uh, the impact of that was very huge on North Korea. So now they can just hardly believe if uh, South or um, South Korean government will say, okay, let's start doing it again. Uh, how can they be sure that uh, another government will come after that and uh, it will change everything one, so, but, one more time? But you're, you're, you're basically inherently yeah. then predicting that the Kim Jong-un uh, regime will last for some time to come. You see that as a, a, an entity that will be there in, in say, five years. R right. It, it will... Uh, uh, Korea for many years for decades uh, was in the center of interests of different countries and it's still there. So we have to look at the situation as a whole. We cannot just say, oh, if Kim Jong-un will do this or that, uh, something will change. No, he can do whatever he wants. But there are, there are other players in the region who can use these measures in their own interests uh, influence the government of the South, the North, and uh, it, it will depend on many, many factors. Okay. And, hey, and the great scholar Gregory Henderson wrote about that as the politics of the vortex in, in the late 1960s, mm -hmm. Korea at the center of this convergence of interest. Right. So if we borrow from that and given your expertise, we know that North Korea you know, has long looked and relied at least since the end of the Cold War to China. However, the suggestion we're seeing increasingly is that it is trying to, again, strategically diversify and is relying now a bit more on Russia, though its trade with Russia is, is markedly less than its trade with China. However, uh, as was cited in an Al Jazeera piece that uh, is with our audience now, um, that was written just a few days ago, uh, the argument is that Russia, uh, certainly since Ukraine, has been signaling more cooperation with North Korea, may or may not be true, uh, that it has sent uh, some cadre of officials, that it has eased visa requirements for Russians, and that it is uh, trading now with Russia in rubles, not dollars, uh, that perhaps uh, President Putin's aspiration um, is now, as he diversifies away from Europe, more towards uh, the Asia Pacific, certainly in terms of energy. We know we have for a long time heard about the energy corridor through the Korean Peninsula to service both South Korea and Japan. That would seem to imply through North Korea as well. Uh, and we know that Russia has uh, great ambitions on the energy front, uh, as well as a, a, a very active relationship with South Korea. How do you see Russia's interplay on the peninsula? Uh, again, as not a government official, but as a member of the media. I'm not a government official. I know, as not a government <laughs> right. official, but as a member of the media. Yeah. Meaning uh, that you have a certain, you, right. you are Russian, but you have a certain independence mm. to uh, qualify what you see. Sure. Uh, concerning the, the, the uh, visits that were mentioned in this article of, of Lankov in this, uh, mm -hmm. Al Jazeera, uh, actually, it's, uh, I, I see it before we, we really see any, any results of, of these contacts. Uh, no, now we, you can look at it from uh, different angles, right? Explain it by different ways. But, uh, you know, uh, since, since, uh, since a long time ago, uh, Russia and uh, North Korea had um, cooperation in different fields, and it, it requires exchange of visits. So many uh, uh, people just uh, pay attention on these visits just at a certain period of time when uh, the attention is attracted by some events like this time. Uh, I don't see any specific uh, progress now, but um, of course, uh, as I see, Russia is the most interested uh, country, uh, country that is more interested in uh, easing tension on Korean Peninsula and its unification. Because we have, yes, we, uh, we started um, projects of uh, uh, connecting uh, railroads of Korea with Trans-Siberian uh, 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 railroad to uh, bring uh, cargoes from South Korea to Europe. Uh, it's very profitable for 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 many sites, and uh, also we have a pipeline project, uh, and all these uh, and and uh, lots of work had been done uh, concerning the, the the railroad project because uh, everything uh, what was required required from uh, northern part was com was completed, 
uh, the, the railroad was renovated, everything was prepared for connection with the south, but uh, the change of the policy in Seoul uh, stopped this, this project. Yeah, and you're talking about the, the change yeah. of policy under Im Young-bok. Yeah, so if, yeah. if uh, the relations between north and south with uh, improve again, and, and we'll be really uh, uh, we'll see a progress in uh, economic cooperation with them and um, uh, uh, trust building of trust. Uh, uh, maybe uh, we will see this. Uh, the, 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 how you say it, Ambitions of Russia will be. Yeah. And, and to be very fair, this mm -hmm. seems to be one of the ambitions of President Bakane, both as a candidate and as president. Mm -hmm. She has voiced a real enthusiasm for a Eurasian vision, a right. part of which is on the United Rail front for transportation purposes, yeah. uh, for trade, uh, for energy. Um, South Korea enjoys and has since the end of the Cold War a very active relationship with Russia. Certainly South Korean um, uh, products are widely consumed in Russia. Sure. Uh, the dramatic success of Hyundai, of Samsung in Russia. Uh, a good back and forth technologically. Samsung has made a $5 billion plus commitment to Russia's uh, Silicon Valley, the Skolkovo project. Uh, there's a lot uh, that takes place in terms of uh, uh, back and forth, even in things like the hospitality industry, uh, small uh, consumer goods. Uh, what do you think about the dynamism between South Korea and Russia? And, and how do you see that versus the more widely covered story of Russia re-engaging or North Korea inviting Russia to engage more actively with it again? Uh, the problem is not with North Korea, as I told you. Uh, uh, the problem is the tension on Korean Peninsula. But how do you see the balance relative to uh, Korean perspectives to Russia and Russian perspectives of Korea? Because you uh, do have an active relationship right. with South Korea and, and you lived and worked in South Korea. Russia will always encourage any contacts and any improvement of relations between South and North. Because uh, under these conditions, like we have now, uh, no businessman no, uh, will just invest money in any project. Uh, if uh, a war can start any moment or uh, any project will just uh, be blocked by the, the tension between North and South. So we have to see uh, what will happen uh, next. And one would assume they also want guarantees for investing within North Korea. Yeah. Though we know that Russian business is interested in things in North Korea like rare earth minerals um, and uh, uh, bauxite, some of the other yeah, uh, yeah. The, the other things that Russia is trying to access in North Korea, uh, beyond our discussion of things like transportation the, and energy. You're right. That's uh, and one of the main, uh, as it was before uh, the Soviet Union time, the main problem was the payment uh, mm -hmm. from North Korea. Uh, uh, you mentioned that the the, the idea of uh, paying with rubles uh, because they just don't don't have dollars or, or they refuse to use it. Uh, but uh, 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 I remember times when they just paid with uh, some products like vegetables and some other stuff uh, for uh, materials from Russia or for, for uh, machines. And uh, uh, so uh, it's not easy uh, to start any uh, any project in North Korea because it will face uh, huge problems of uh, of payment. Uh, Mm -hmm. What what about North Koreans in Russia? Because there has been some talk about yes. absorbing North Korean labor if there is a transition on the peninsula uh, to try to stymie refugee flows. There may be a way to encourage some transfer and employment of Russians north through the uh, the border. I mean, sorry, of North Koreans mm -hmm. north through the border with Russia. I haven't heard anything about uh, refugees from North Korea. In, meaning in less scale, but yeah, right. but, meaning an alternative. But or we a have, way you, to, we to have uh, North Korean workers uh, um, employed in construction sector mm -hmm. in the Far East and uh, in timber uh, production. Sure, uh, um, but it's not. I, it's not as significant as I see it. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, the numbers I've seen are between 110 and 150 thousand, right. and that's Vladivostok, uh, the timber industry, and as far over as preparation for the Sochi facilities. Right. I'm not an expert in economic affairs, so I cannot tell is it much or not. Yeah. Um, in terms of Russian perspectives and with Korea going forward, uh, does Russia, from your perspective, provide an al alternative to China? 
um, a complement to China's involvement on the peninsula? How do you see see that? There's much been made of North Korea in the Cold War period playing off Moscow and Beijing. Of course, it's a very different day in 2014, but but how do you see that balancing, uh, at least as a Russian journalist? Uh, usually North Korea is balancing between China and Russia for many, many years. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, North Korea uh, got used to these uh, relations with China and Russia for their interest. Mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, in the 60s when it was um, a very hard time uh, in our relations when uh, Stalinism has gone and uh, Khrushchev came as a new policy. And at that time, uh, the relations between Soviet Union and North Korea was very, very tense. And uh, North Korea started balancing between China and Russia uh, and, uh, and using the, uh, the problems that had been uh, between China and Russia at the time. Uh, so uh, again, uh, these days it also can depend on uh, the relation, not only between the relations between Russia and uh, and North Korea, but also between the all the players in the region, mm -hmm. between Russia, China, the United States, and Japan, and sure. South Korea, of course. Sure. Yeah, we have no problems with so South Korea. We have. No, oh no! Uh, in North, fact, you have a, a very a, yeah. a very strong relationship with South Korea. Uh, could could I ask you uh, to, to from from your having had a very unique outlook on a very important page of history, meaning the events in the late '80s, the transitions that took place you know, covering the Korean Peninsula, you know, on both sides of that transition in terms of the global end of the Cold War. Are there lessons from that period for North Korea as it changes? Uh, yes, they have uh, bitter lessons, mostly. Uh, again, because every attempt to start some kind of reforms, they don't like this war, war reforms, but some kind of changes uh, it's followed by the worsening relations of North Korea with the South or the United States or Japan. And some conservatives, uh, conservative parties in North Korea, I think they uh, could say, look, we're doing this and then uh, we have, we have uh, things getting worse. Uh, so the, the experience is very unpleasant for them, so that's why they're very cautious. Um, Mm. And uh, I remember uh, the first time when uh, uh, South Cor uh, North Korean uh, Vice Prime Minister Kim Da Hyun uh, came to Seoul uh, and started the negotiations on economic, vast, uh, huge economic cooperation. Uh, and uh, again, this event followed by uh, some uh, new tensions between South and North, and uh, this person just disappeared. Mm. Uh, so it's very difficult uh, to uh, to do something while we have uh, changes in the countries that are surrounding uh, North Korea and South Korea. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you let me, I, I also want to uh, tell a little bit about uh, the journal how, how how Korean affairs are covered Please. in in the press. Uh, there are kinds of uh, the journalists. M many journalists are uh, just uh, prisoners of uh, hostages of uh, uh, stereotypes about Korea as a whole. Uh, not, not stereotypes not, about journalists. No, uh, no. I say so. Yeah, but uh, I remember. I will tell you one story. When I was a student and the first time mm -hmm. uh, came to Pyongyang uh, for six months, we were invited to. Uh, Minister of uh, Higher Education in Moscow before going there, a group of uh, students. Uh, and we were instructed what we can ex expect. So the aim of it was to uh, instruct us and to, be, to get us prepared to what we can expect uh, in terms of life in North Korea. And a uh, pretty serious guy told us that um, you students will be completely isolated from each other. Uh, women cannot wear trousers, no pictures in the street. So it was, the, they pictured how life is a complete disaster. Mm. We were uh, absolutely devastated up to coming out from the ministry. But when we arrived, just on the way from the airport to Pyongyang, looking through the 
the, the window of buses, we could see lots of women wearing trousers. Mm -hmm. I took the, the, my camera and nobody told me anything. <laughs> and uh, if you consider isolation is just they let us to live in a separate rooms on the same floor. <laughs> it's not that well, we were discussed at the ministry. And uh, still, at many years have passed since that time, and still I'm hearing uh, and reading in uh, newspapers or in agencies uh, here that, wow, North, there's a changes in North Korea, like women are allowed to wear trousers. <laughs> I don't know what's the problem with the trousers, but it's still mentioned. <laughs> so what I see as a journalist comes to North Korea, he sees something, and uh, there's a trend of uh, a journalism and uh, many in a scholarship too, uh, the young generation of specialists, if they do not know something or they don't not, do not understand something, they just mm -hmm. close their eyes on it like it ever existed. Mm. And uh, so they are like a white page, uh, white um, piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, the recent reports, uh, like Coca-Cola appeared in Pyongyang. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a student in uh, 1982. I, I, I uh, like to, uh, so I, I had a treat for myself, uh, a cup of uh, shock chocolate ice cream and Coca-Cola, kind of Coca-Cola made in Japan. It was called uh, Yes Coke, yes, I still remember that. Mm. It was many years ago, but uh, it, it exists. It, but somehow, somebody, a person from the West, goes to North Korea, sees something, and he decides, "Oh, that's a new thing." Mm. So, if you uh, read some stories on North Korea, they're very, very uh, not cautious. But you, you have to understand that maybe it's just a, a personal impression of the person mm. who writes about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember there was a very uh, interesting uh, magazine. Uh, a long time ago, it was Far Eastern Economic Review, and I remember a very good phrase from it. Uh, you have to remember that uh, North and South Korea, uh, be, uh, you have to be cautious what North and South Korea write about each other, mm -hmm. but you have to remember it also can be true. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's great. Um, let me ask you before we, we turn to our uh, studio audience here. Uh, about your uh, appreciation for Korean culture, which is deep, uh, your love of Korean cuisine, uh, and your accomplishments in the kitchen. Uh, because that's an interesting aspect uh, that, that very much complements your, your professional endeavors. Uh, how did you become a master chef of Korean cuisine? Uh, I'm not a master chef yet. <laughs> yet. I would like to. You told me you I would were. Like to, yeah, I, I, theoretically, <laughs> yes. Theoretically. Men never exaggerate. Please go. Um, um, yeah, well, I, I tell you the truth. When, again, when I was a student uh, mm -hmm. from the very beginning, and I, I was invited to North Korean embassy in Moscow, and, uh, uh, they, uh, it was a reception. Mm. And this is the first time I tried Korean food. So I remember there was chapche and uh, other mm. and kimchi and other beautiful, uh, wonderful Korean uh, dishes, and uh, I was so impressed that mm. I decided to try to do it. My, how can they do it? And I, 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 I started doing it myself, and uh, actually I, uh, I learned how to do it, and then I traveled a lot in North and South Korea. And I consider uh, cooking and cuisine is a, a very important part of culture of any uh, country, any, any, mm -hmm. any nation. Uh, and what we see in Korean cuisine is very unique. It's very simple. And uh, this is not just simple, the simplicity is uh, a rationalism, I see it as a rationalism. Uh, it's uh, spicy hot, it talks about the temper of Korean uh, people. And uh, uh, the third thing is, uh, it's a plenty of food. If you are invited in a Korean house, a Korean home, even North Korea, when there is nothing to eat, they will give you as much as they can mm. to entertain you. This is a very important part of Korean mm -hmm. uh, culture and Korean character. Ivan, thank you. I can't think of a better way to, to finish off the first half of our policy season than with that and with your eloquence and your insight. Uh, good luck in your, your continued work and the work of professional journalists is, in, is incredibly vital. And we're very privileged to have you here on the stage at the Korea Society. Uh, Ivan and I would like to thank uh, Nikita Desai, our Director of uh, Policy and Corporate Programs, who's done such an amazing job this year. 
Uh, she will be off on maternity leave, and we wish her very well and look forward to having her back on our programs uh, uh, with the new baby in tow. Uh, we'd also like to uh, thank Stephanie Lee, to thank uh, Peter Stemke in our audio booth who makes all of the video and audio here happen. And I would encourage you to please uh, uh, reach out and check out our audio podcasts or our video on YouTube. Become a YouTube subscriber uh, because uh, your support is vital, and please refer those over to your friends. It is all free of charge. We make that available through the generous support of places like the Korea Foundation, uh, Samsung, Hyundai Motors, and others. And so we're grateful for their support and for yours and for your patronage. And to our intern team as well, I'd just like to offer a special thanks. They've helped a lot this season. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Please stay, stay cool. Enjoy the rest of this World Cup. Please see our gallery on your way out. We have a wonderful uh, display of uh, prints uh, that will be here and at the Seoul Museum in the fall. We look forward to having you back in the fall. And please join me in thanking Yvonne for his wonderful observations. <laughs>